objective A, multiply rational expressions. Number 1. x squared over 6 times 1 over x cubed. To multiply two rational expressions, your goal is to cross all common factors from the top and the bottom. Let's do a simple demonstration using number 1. On the top, I'm going to keep x squared. In the bottom, I have a 6. Multiply by second rational expression on the top, I'm going to keep it as a 1. As for the bottom, I'm going to break x cubed into x squared times x, because x squared times x give you x cubed. Why do I do that? It's because I have an x cubed, x squared, sorry. I have an x squared on the top, so I can cross out the common factors from the top and the bottom. And then you write down what's left. On the top, we have a 1. On the bottom, we have 6x. And that's simplified. Number 2. Number 2, we have a negative rational expression multiplied by another negative rational expression. Negative times negative is positive. So we could determine the sign first. We could get rid of both of the negative signs. And then, I'm going to factor both the top and the bottom. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross it out, common factors, from the top and the bottom as I see them. Um, for the top, I can cross out, let's see, this x with this x right here. I could cross out this y with this y right here. And then, I can also cross out x cubed with x. So this time I'm going to cross out x, cubed, x squared first because it has a lower power. When I cross out x cubed, I'm just going to cross out the 3 because I know that there is one more x left on the top. And in terms of the numbers, we could also do some simplification. I could divide 3 and 15, both of them by their GCF 3. If I divide 3 by 3, it becomes 1. If I divide 15 by 3, it becomes 5. So I'm going to write a 5 right here. For the other two numbers, 8 and 10, they have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to do the same thing. Cross out 8. If I do 8 divided by 2, I'm going to get a 4. So write a 4 right here. If I divide 10 by 2, I'm going to have a 5. So write a 5. Can we further simplify? Yes. You have 5 and 5 on the top and on the bottom, so I could cross them out. And now, it looks pretty bloody because we crossed out a lot of things. You just have to be very careful in terms of what's left. Let's check out upstairs, the top part first. Uh, we have an X, and I don't see anything else because I crossed out everything, so write down the X. As for the bottom, we have a 4, apparently, and we also have y to the 4th. So write down 4, y to the 4th. And that's your final answer when you multiply these two rational expressions. Moving on to second page. Number 5. Number 5 is slightly different from number 1, number 3. In this case, we cannot cross out right away. We need to factor because we have binomials in each part um, comparing to number one number three where you have monomial where you could just cross out common factors for binomials or trinomials or more terms uh, on the top or on the bottom you need to factor them before you could cross it out because we can only cross over multiplication let's factor each part first I'm gonna do a structure so you have something times something, and each of them is a rational expression. Fraction bar in the middle, and we have a little dot in the middle as well. 3x minus 4, unfortunately we cannot factor this, so you just leave it like 3x minus 4 as a single factor. The bottom one, you have 10x plus 6. They do have a GCF of 2, so I'm going to take out 2, and we will have 5x plus 3 inside. Notice that it's the same as the 5x plus 3 on the top right, which is a single factor. So you write down 5x plus 3 right here. The bottom one, 6x minus 8. 
they have a GCF of 2, so take out 2. Inside, we have 3x minus 4. Notice that they're already nicely arranged, so we could cross out the common factors. 3x minus 4 can be crossed out with 3x minus 4. 5x plus 3 can be crossed out with 5x plus 3. Write down what's left. It's very important that if you cross out everything on either the top or the bottom, then there is a 1 left. On the top, we cross out both factors, so we have a 1 left. As for the bottom, you have 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's your final answer. Number 7. Number 7 is very similar to number 5. Let's do the structure first. Something times something. And we're going to factor every single part. 3a minus 4 cannot be factored. We just simply copy it. 2a minus 6, we could factor out a 2. Inside, we have a plus 3. 6a minus, uh, plus 18, we could factor out 6. Inside, we have a plus 3. In the bottom, 5a minus 4 cannot be factored, so you simply write 5a minus 4. Now let's cross out some common factors. We have a plus 3, a plus 3. And for the number part, we have 2 and 6. So I could divide 2 by 2, divide 6 by 2. If I divide 2 by 2, it just becomes 1. If I divide 6 by 2, it becomes 3. So I'm going to write a 3 right here. And I think that's everything that I can do. Now let's look at what's left. On the top, you have 3a minus 4 times 3. So let's do a step by step. 3a minus 4 times 3. 3. Because 3a minus 4 is a single factor, make sure you put it inside grouping symbol over 5a minus 4. That's all left in the bottom. On the top, we have to distribute. So we have 9a minus 12. As for the bottom, we have 5a minus 4. And that will be the final expression for number 7. Number 9. Number 9 is more complicated because we have quadratic expressions everywhere. That means we need to do educated guess. Factor every single part. Do the structure first. Something times something. For each part, we're going to have two factors. So put two pairs of grouping symbols. I think I need more space for this one. Let me redo everything. All right, let's do grouping symbols. If I factor each of them, do educated guess, I will have m minus 3, m plus 2, over m plus 4, m plus 1. For the second rational expression, m minus 4, oh sorry, m minus 5, m plus 4. And then in the bottom we have m minus 3, m minus 5. Good thing is these quadratic expressions, their leading coefficient has a leading, uh, their leading coefficients are all 1. So it's pretty easy to, to perform an educated guess. And now let's cross our common factors. The most satisfying part m minus 3 and m minus 3, uh, m minus 5, m minus 5, m plus 4, and m plus 4. That's everything that we can cross out. We have m plus 2 over m plus 1 left. And that will be our final answer to number 9. Objective B, divide rational expressions. Div dividing rational expressions is very similar to multiplying rational expressions. You only need to perform one extra step at the beginning, which is converting the division to multiplication. You could remember as keep, change, flip when you divide fractions. It's just like how you divide fractions. Number 11, w over 4 divided by w over 24. So we're going to keep the first fraction. 
W over 4, change the operation from division to multiplication, put a little dot, and then flip the second fraction upside down, we have 24 over W. And then this is just multiplication of rational expressions, which we just talked about. Your goal is to simplify as much as you can before you're multiplying. So you're going to cross out the common factors from the top and the bottom. We do have W and W, cross them out. As for the 4 and 24, they have a common factor of 4. So I divide 4 by 4, that's a 1. Divide 24 by 4, that is 6. So you basically have a 6 on the top or 1 on the bottom. And the answer will simply be 6. Number 13. Negative 7 over y divided by y, same thing. Keep the first rational expression, change the operation from division to multiplication, flip the second rational expression upside down. The second rational expression is simply a y. Uh, you could add a denominator if you want, y over 1, if that makes it easy for you to see what's going to happen when you flip it. So let's flip it. It's going to be 1 over y. And then we're going to multiply. There's nothing to cross out at this point. Do not cross out the two y's because they are both downstairs. You cannot cross them out. You can only cross them out if they're on different floors. So we simply multiply straight across. Negative still, you have a negative. 7 times y, that's 7 over y times y, that's y squared. And that's your final answer. Number 15. Same thing as before. Before we do anything, we're going to change the operation from division to multiplication. Copy the first rational expression. Change the operation from division to multiplication. And flip the second rational expression upside down. And now we're going to factor every single part as much as we can. First part, 4u plus 8, we could factor a common factor of 4, and you have u plus 2. Denominator, we could factor our 2, and you have u minus 3. 6u minus 18, we could factor our 6, and you have u minus 3. 5u plus 10, we could factor our 5, and you have u plus 2. And now it's the most satisfying part. We're going to cross out common factors everywhere. u plus 2, u plus 2. u minus 3, u minus 3. 2 and 4, you could cross it out. We have a 2 left on the top. And I think that's everything that we can do. Now let's multiply and see what happens. On the top, we have 2 and 6 left. 2 times 6, that's 12. Over. On the bottom, we only have a 5 left. So 12 over 5 is your final answer to number 15. Moving on to a more complicated example, number 17. First thing to do is keep change and flip. And then we're going to factor every single part. First part, k plus 2 times k minus 1 over, this is the difference between two perfect squares. It's simply k plus 2, k minus 2 times top right, it's going to be k plus 3 times k minus 2. And for the last part, k plus 2 times k plus 3. Cross all common factors, we have k plus 2, k plus 2. Uh, k minus 2, k minus 2, k plus 3, k plus 3. What's left, we have k minus 1 over k plus 2. Objective C, solve applied problems involving multiplication or division of rational expressions. The area for triangle is 20x squared plus 7x minus 6. 
find the base of the triangle if the height is 4x plus 3. So this is basically talking about um, the area formula for a triangle. So if you remember, the area formula for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So let's use what is given and plug it into this formula. The area is 20x squared plus 7x minus 6. It's equal to base, which we don't know, times the height. The height is 4x plus 3 and over 2. And we simply solve this equation for base. So first thing to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And that's going to give me 40x squared plus 14x minus 12 equals base times 4x plus 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by the base, which is 4x plus 3. Uh, sorry, the height, 4x plus 3, to isolate the base. Therefore, our base is simply 40x squared plus 14x minus 12 over 4x plus 3. And we just need to simplify this rational expression. First thing to do is factor the top. They do have a common factor of 2. And what's left is 20x squared plus 7x minus 6 over 4x plus 3. And we're going to factor the quadratic part. If you factor the quadratic part, we will obtain 4x plus 3 and 5x minus 2. Denominator still 4x plus 3. So if you have trouble factoring the quadratic part, you could look at the denominator. Chances are one of the factors on the top is the same as the denominator 4x plus 3. Now let's cross out the common factor 4x plus 3 and write down our final answer. It's simply 2 times 5x minus 2. Let's distribute that to our final answer is 10x minus 4. And that is the, high, uh, the base of the triangle. Thanks for watching.